Hey guys, welcome back to another creepy story time. This time is not a mukbang, it's just a creepy story time. And, um, please excuse the mess over there. I was making some burgers for lunch for the boys earlier. And sometimes in these videos, you will catch my kitchen spotless clean. And other times it's going to be messy and lived in. <laughs> I honestly don't care what people think, but... <laughs> I think it's funny because you see the bottles of ketchup and mayo there. <laughs> okay, anyway, so I have for you guys today another creepy haunted object. This time it's not a doll. It's called the Crying Boy Painting or the Curse of the Crying Boy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read to you guys about it. Okay, it says in England... 1985, a series of bizarre fires broke out, destroying many homes and businesses. The link between the fires was a collection of paintings known as crying boys. Out of the devastation of each fire, only the paintings would survive, and soon they would be labeled as cursed. Bruno Amadio, an acad academically trained painter, was working as a painting restorer in Venice when he created his series that became known as Crying Boys. These paintings, of which at least 65 were made, all featured young boys who stared straight out of the picture with tears welling in their eyes and rolling down their cheeks. The pictures were created for tourists visiting post-World War II Venice. The significance being that the paintings showed the plight of the children who had been recently orphaned due to the war. Eventually, some of these paintings were brought to England, mass-produced, and sold in grocery and department stores at cheap prices. More than 50,000 copies of the paintings made their way into people's houses all across England. In September 1985, British newspaper The Sun ran a report on some strange happenings surrounding the crying boy paintings. The title of the story read, Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy. The article told the story of Ron and May Hall's home of 27 years in Rotherham, which was destroyed by a devastating fire. The fire was started when an unattended frying pan caught a light and the house went with it. The strange thing was that only one item seemed to have survived the blaze. Found amongst the ashes and ruin was a frame. The painting within was face down on the floor and only slightly scorched. The crying boy had survived the fire somehow. It gets even stranger. Ron Hall's brother was a firefighter and he told how several houses had burned to the ground and that the sole remaining item was a copy of the crying boy found intact lying face down on the floor. Ron Hall's brother was a firefighter. Why am I reading the same paragraph again? Sorry. He also insinuated that firefighters believed the painting to be cursed and that none would hang the picture in their homes. One fire station officer, Alan Wilkinson, had logged more than 50 crying boy fires. Public panic. With the Sun's large reader base and the fact that more than 50,000 copies of the crying boy were hanging in British homes, a fear in the curse quickly spread. Many readers told their stories through the paper and various other papers around the country. The story was always the same. Soon after the picture found its way into a home, a fire broke out, destroying everything except the picture itself. Several <laughs> several readers, I'm sorry, I thought I was reading the same paragraph again. Several readers also wrote in explaining that after they had read about the curse, they attempted to destroy their copies of the paintings. They attempted to burn them in their garden incinerators, but the painting failed to burn. Soon after a crying boy fire had gutted an Italian restaurant, the Sun ran a story encouraging readers to send them their copy of the paintings if they felt fear from the curse. The Sun organized mass bonfires for the burning of the paintings, and soon over 2,000 had finally gone up in flames. Although they were not easy to burn, they did eventually succumb to the fire and flames. 
Soon, other methods for lifting the curse of the painting came to light, such as handing the painting to another, thereby giving them the curse, or hanging the picture alongside a painting containing a crying girl. The story that the fires began to smolder and the series of events relegated to the status of legend. However, the question still is, if the paintings were indeed somehow causing or enabling fires to take place, what force can be behind it? The story of Don Bonillo. There are several stories behind the legend of the painting itself. One states that the models for the various crime boys were orphans who soon after the paintings were completed died in an orphanage fire. Nice and simple. My preferred version, if not for story alone, reads as follows. Bruno Amadio, also known as Bragolin, had fled to Spain soon after the end of World War II. Here Amadio met a young boy named Don Bonillo, a mute orphan who had seen his parents perish in a house fire during the war. Amadio soon adopted the boy, although he was warned off of doing so by a local priest, the boy being the center of many mysterious fires that broke out wherever he went. The boy was known locally as the devil child. Poor kid. Amadio refused to believe such stories, and the new family did well. Amadio's paintings were selling well, and the two were living easy. Unfortunately, one day Amadio found that his house and studio had burned to the ground. Remembering the priest's warnings, he immediately blamed Don and kicked him out of the family. Don Bonillo was not heard from again until 1976 and surrounding another bizarre event. Just outside of Barcelona, a car smashed into a wall and burst into flames. The driver was killed and was so horrifically burned he was not able to be identified. However, upon investigation, back at the police yard, the glove compartment was pried open. There, among burnt items, was an untouched driver's license. The name on the license was Don Bonillo. It is said all of Amadio's paintings of crying boys were cursed by the memory of Don Bonillo. Unfortunately, all of the facts of this story cannot be 100% confirmed. Bruno Amadio, the painter, died in 1981. The truth of this story has also gone with him. Then, of course, it could just be coincidence. Many houses had crying boys adorning their walls. People began to see the easily recognizable image in the remains, and a new urban legend comes to light. Wow, creepy, huh? I don't know. What do you guys think? I really don't know. Like, the article says the legend or the true, the real story died with the person. So, who knows? But I always thought... It was, um, this case was pretty interesting because um, it came out in um, Deadly Possessions. Um, I love that show. I don't know if it's coming back, but I, I spoke about it in one of my videos when I did a mukbang a while back talking about um, the, the show Deadly Possess Possessions. is hosted by Zach Bagans, who is the host of Ghost Adventures. And I guess, you know, Deadly Possessions is like a spinoff of Ghost Adventures. But um, in that show, he owns a museum. He bought himself a museum, and he collects, like, haunted objects and or cursed objects and stuff like that. And they, they mentioned, they talked about the, the, the painting of the crying boy, and somebody even brought a, a copy, like a replica of it, to, the, to his museum. And they were talking about it on the show. But I never read, like, the, the full story behind it. So I thought it would be pretty interesting to share with you guys, you know. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You know, is it superstition or do you believe that stuff like that could be possible? I don't know. But I thought it would be cool to share another story with you. This is really creepy. Um, I know one thing for sure, true or not, I don't want that painting in my house ever. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, anyway, as always, I will insert pictures at the end of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little creepy story time. And I will see you guys in my next video. Alright guys, bye-bye.